phone. Are the networks ready to maximize those new specs in the phone? So that is where I think a lot of people buying an iPhone 12, expecting a big jump up in speed with 5G, may be a little bit disappointed. Uh, most of the wireless networks have, uh, for 5G have not been built out, and there are a lot of areas in the country that, that don't have it or don't have access to it. PCMag, which does some really great testing around 5G networks around the country, they found that um, you know, in some cases, ATT's 5G network was actually slower uh, than 4G. Uh, T-Mobile's low-band 5G network uh, was not necessarily that much faster than 4G. And the extreme high speeds that you could get with Verizon's ultra-wideband network, that sort of four gigabit uh, speed that we're touting, which you might get one gigabit under sort of more normal circumstances. The number of areas where you can get that is very, very limited. Uh, it's a millimeter wave technology, which does not have very much range. And so it's going to require a massive investment in infrastructure and adding 5G base stations that support this technology until the average person sees something drastically different than the, what they have today. So you're saying the early adopters here are, are going to be disappointed. Peter, how, how long is it going to take? before 5G does really change the game? It, it takes a few years. And I think that it's not going to be like the change that we saw when we went from 2G to 3G, where we saw uh, you know, something that felt like a difference between dial-up and broadband. Now, you will see some improvements that aren't just speed-related. Latency, which is the speed at which you, you can ping a server, uh, that's an important thing for things like networking uh, for video conferencing and for uh, the networking relating to playing video games. And so if you play a lot of mobile games, multiplayer games on your phone and you're not at home on a Wi-Fi network, that ping speed, uh, that lower latency speed that you're going to get out of 5G will be meaningful for you. Uh, but I think that, you know, in terms of whether you download a, a video uh, a little bit faster than you did before, most people aren't going to care that much. Uh, and most people aren't necessarily watching 4K video streamed on their phones. They're doing that on their TVs if they're doing that at all right now. What, what about in other countries? Are there other countries where the networks are already ready to, to maximize the technology in these phones? And, and with that in mind, uh, do you think that resonates enough with the consumer that we'll see sales much higher in those countries? Yes, and I think that if you look at uh, Asian countries, especially in China, uh, 5G is something that consumers there are caring about, and the networks are built out more than they are here in the U.S. And frankly, the network infrastructures are different uh, than they are here, and, and the carriers have made different decisions than U.S.-based carriers have made around their 5G networks. And so, uh, you know, for, for consumers there who are thinking about an upgrade, 5G is sort of table stakes now, especially because there have been a number of, of higher-end Android phones which have been supporting 5G for some time now. So I'm trying to piece it all together, Peter. How, how It sounds like you're slightly underwhelmed at, at the announcements today, but the bottom line is, and Katie Huberty, the analyst at Morgan Stanley, says 240 million iPhones could be shipped this year. That would be a record in part because of the 5G and in part just because there's so much pent-up demand for people to upgrade. So what's the upshot in terms of demand? Yeah. I mean, I think there is a lot of latent demand right now. And I think um, the last couple of generations of iPhones have been more incremental in terms of improvements. There hasn't been the sort of big signature change or upgrade around something like 5G, which people can get excited about, even if they're not necessarily going to see as much of a day-to-day -day improvement. Uh, so I think that there are a lot of people that have been holding off on buying a new iPhone and now feels like the time. I think that, um, you know, I, I think we also don't want to minimize the fact that they have made some changes to the physical design. Uh, the new iPhone, the 12, does look more reminiscent of the iPhone 4 and iPhone 5 designs, which people tend to really like. And, and so I think that um, sometimes just changing that physical exterior can be enough to get people excited about making an upgrade. There have been a lot of improvements to the camera, especially on the Pro Max. Uh, phone. And so if you're someone that cares a lot about having the highest possible image quality of your phone, uh, there are some significant improvements there. It's not that, you know, I think it's easy to be sort of underwhelmed or disappointed. I think that we've, um, you know, we're now 10 years into the, more than 10 years into the iPhone. And uh, we've seen a lot of improvements over the past 10 years, uh, you know, 15 years of, of, of smartphones. Um, it's that, you know, the things that can be done to really markedly change the iPhone experience or the smartphone experience in general, there's not a lot that can be done at this point. I think most people would say they want better battery life. Maybe they want a little bit better image quality. But most people are generally happy with the experience that they get out of their phones right now. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.